The next episode of The Commercial Break starts now. I do that. That's like turkey gall. <laughs> That's another kind of gall. <laughs> shake that ass. Shake that ass. Guess what? What? Seth Rogen liked my tweet. Well, it's I actually am. not a tweet. I've just started tweeting, so I don't actually know how to tweet. I'm twitting. I'm twatting. As uh, who said that? Uh, who was that? Col- Colbert, when he went on <laughs> the morning show, and was like, "I just started twatting." <laughs> so they love that classic Colbert. Classic. Classic. Yeah, Seth Rogen liked my tweet, or better yet, he liked my reply. Is probably better. I should be honest about this. He That's liked huge. the reply. It is huge because I, you know, then like an obsessive little girl, I went and saw how many other people he <laughs> liked their replies, and it was like zero. I saw him replying to nobody else. I just saw him liking nobody else's reply except for mine, yeah. which I thought was big. But you know, I gotta it's leave big. it there because like a little sc- also like a little school girl now. I was like, oh, what what, what other funny things can I say? <laughs> Johnny. Catch his attention, yeah. catch his eye. The, the, the second Twitter reply, eye. the second reply didn't catch his eye because he was probably like, you know, fucking obsessive creep. <laughs> Brian, TCB Brian was cool until he had the second reply <laughs> right away. <laughs> it's like when you like a girl. I mean, I, I don't know if you've been through this experience, but there's been times when you have that. It, there's that internet person that you know, yeah. but you don't really know. Yeah. And then they say something on online. I mean, this happened long before I got married. I just want to qualify that. Uh, but they say something online and then you're like, you're thinking in your head, I'm like, what's the cute, funny thing that I can say that doesn't make me sound like an obsessed asshole makes her laugh and gets her attention. Didn't work then. Doesn't work now. (laughs) Seth Rogen Rogen doesn't like me anymore because of my tweets. Plus I only have one follower. So he probably looked at my, he probably didn't actually. Yeah, (laughs) I know it's you and Jeff. And let's be honest about it. Seth Rogen did not go look at my profile. He's He's got better things. He's got 8.7 million followers. I mean, he would have thought you were a bot because you really did have four, four <laughs> I, subscribers. I have four well. subscribers. My wife, oh, Hoadley, Jeff, and some guy who has a, like a painting business. <laughs> Jose's painting. <laughs> Love your tweets, bro. <laughs> Thanks, Jose. I, I, think, I think that's the worst marketing ploy in the world is to like, you know, to, there's, I got to tell you about something. Tell me. It, and this is now our third time recording this. So <laughs> tell you, I have to tell you something a little new. loopy. There's a guy that, uh, that I, he, I was like in a business Facebook group with him and he requested my friendship on Facebook. And just, just because I wanted to be nice at the moment, I don't, re- I don't accept a lot of friend requests unless I actually know somebody, but I was like, yeah. okay, we've communicated a couple times on the Facebook group. Let me accept his friendship. Well, I accept his friendship. <laughs> accept his friendship. Let me accept his friendship. This is such a fucking weird world we live in. <laughs> yeah. Let me accept his friendship. I'm going to heart Seth Rogen's tweet. It's like I'm living on, you know, coffee, MSNBC, and <laughs> Seth Rogen's likes. And so uh, so let me accept his, his friendship just to be, you know, a nice guy. And then he calls me. Like, I don't know, 30 minutes later, he calls me. Yeah. And then he, and I don't answer because I'm like, oh, it's the first time he's ever called me. It's a Friday night at like nine o'clock. I'm like, I'm not going to answer this guy's fucking phone calls Friday night at nine o'clock. <laughs> Who does that? Who does that? Who calls? First of all, second of all, the election's going on. Like who's doing yeah. any work right now? Like don't, right. don't work. Even when you call me a Friday at two o'clock, I wasn't answering your phone call. Now you're calling me at 9 p.m. Yeah. And then he texts me, saw that you were online, bro. Just thought we should chat. Oh, and God. I'm like, you motherfucker. Now, if I block him then it's gonna be a total dick move and like all the other people in the facebook business group and are you know because there's only like uh, there's only 100 people in the facebook business group and they all really are relative to my business but now i'm gonna be the dick who's blocking people <laughs> fuck now i'm in a situation so now this not only happened friday night it happened saturday night and then it happened again today like this morning i'm on my facebook page and he he hits me up on on a, a text message and he's like hey bro see that you're online you want to chat for a few <laughs> Chat for a few about what? Yeah. About what? Text me. Text me when you want to talk about. Well, we'll I was going to say, way. you need to make yeah. an appointment to talk. Be like a normal human being and text me. <laughs> Why do we want to talk on the phone? The random face, uh, FaceTime calls, too. Ah. Where you're just like, ah, ah. why are they FaceTiming? What do you want? <laughs> I'm yeah. in my robe with a glass of wine and my hair is 
every week. <laughs> That's my son. It's <laughs> my son every five minutes. Let's not FaceTime. He one time Facebook <laughs> my ex-girlfriend. One you oh, know, and no. I was like, oh, uh, shit. <laughs> of all the human beings to touch in my fucking, fu- to hit on my fucking contact list, you hit like the super double X, right? <laughs> right. I should have taken that phone number out a yeah. long time ago. But the FaceTime, now luckily she didn't answer it, but now I'm stuck wondering <laughs> if she's wondering if I'm thinking about her all the time. Like, I, I knew he'd be back. <laughs> Yeah, I see how happy your marriage with two kids is. Ah, yeah, you're trying yeah. to FaceTime her. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you'd be back. It's so funny, Brian, I don't know which way to look at you well, because... Well, now here we are. And for those of you who are listening in on the podcast, Chrissy looks awful different today <laughs> because she's actually in the studio. We actually have her in the studio. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Guess who? It's Chrissy. <laughs> yes, I'm so happy to be here. I know. My wife, my beautiful, beautiful wife, and Gustavo. 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 My beautiful wife and Gustavo got straight to work on the studio here, which you can now view on YouTube. Now, if you're watching this, so that's for the people who are listening. So now go to tcbpodcast.com. You can see all of the episodes are now up there on YouTube. We're about 10 deep. I don't know, 50 clips or something like that. You can go and digest small bits of it if you don't have an hour of time to, <laughs> to waste. Or if you just hate us, you know, you just want to like hate watch us for a few minutes. You can do that in the morning in like three and four minute installments. <laughs> I've done that for you. You're welcome. Um, and then uh, you can also go read the show notes and join the break room for the after show. Though we didn't do an after show last week. We may not do an after show this week because if you're watching this on YouTube now, you'll notice that the video quality may not be the kind that you're expecting out of a multi-million dollar <laughs> right. studio from TCB podcast because uh, just like Chrissy and I have done this entire podcast journey, anytime we do anything new technical, we fuck it up majorly. <laughs> and so I failed to realize that the camera that I was using, the I'll, I'll give him a shout out, the Canon Rebel T6i, which is recommended all over online for video streaming, like making your face, you know, you get your YouTube channel, make lots of millions of dollars with your Canon T Rebel <laughs> TXI. You, you know. too can make yeah, lots of you money. You too can make lots of money. <laughs> Look at me, I'm a I'm a YouTube sensation. <laughs> And you could do that too. You just got to get your Canon Rebel T6i and hook it up to your computer. Now, what the guy did fail to tell me, or what I may not have watched all the way to the end of the video, <laughs> is that you can only record 29 minutes and 59 seconds each time that you record on a DSLR camera. Now, why is that? Well, I just learned in the 15 minute interval we took between recording two different episodes <laughs> that, uh, that because, of, because of regulations, man, regulations i'm not sure what regulations i don't even know what the, the fuck that means regulations <laughs> what are the regulations here's the regulations this is my guess chris are you ready i'm gonna fill you in with a little i'm gonna smack down a little knowledge on you okay i'm ready video camera companies and camera companies are the same thing but they don't want you using your camera camera for video camera in they want you to buy another video camera for your camera camera in. Mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying makes sense that's right it's like the crack dealer <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but I now know in Oregon, you can smoke crack freely. <laughs> yes. Stop it right now. You're asking for the virus. Here's the thing. We had a couple of very important stories that happened in the time. Actually, we haven't recorded in a while. The last time we recorded was like two Thursdays ago, right? I think so. The yeah. Thursday before the election. Now mm-hmm. we're recording the Monday after the election. And we've had Still some... Still feeling a little hungover. <laughs> <laughs> Hence why we're recording on Monday instead of <laughs> <Yes>. Thursday. <laughs> um, we had a few big breaking news stories, and I think we should just get right to them. We should hold no suspense over our audience, and we know they're waiting on bating breath, so here it is. Gwen Stefani and Blake Shelton are not divorcing. <laughs> Because they were never married. Correct. <laughs> because they were never married, according to Chrissy Hoadley. Now, I have not verified this with any news outlets. They're and not married. <laughs> just to let you know, the news outlets do not determine the outcome of my marriage. I just want you to know That's that. That's true. I don't know when Recount. we started thinking. Yeah, I don't know when we started thinking <laughs> that the news outlets had any bearing on my wedding, but doesn't. Okay. All right. So here's the deal. Recount. Blake Shelton, noted Trump supporter. Gwen Stefani, noted Biden supporter. There was some 
conversation that they were going to split up. Whether or not that was a divorce or not really depends on whether or not they were married or not. <laughs> Information that I cannot give you because I have yet to actually pick up my phone in the last two hours that I've learned this. So, but I'm here to tell you that this is fake news. Fake news. They are not getting a divorce or separating from their engagement. That's Good. it. Good show. Yeah. Brum, brum. Great show. Congratulations. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Talk to you later. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I thought that was, I, how could you, that is breaking news. How could you live in a, in 2020? Yeah. It would Kellyanne be Conway and George Conway. Yeah, I don't understand that. Blake Shelton and Gwen Stefani. How do you do that? I, I don't know. I don't know if my wife felt differently than I did about the current election cycle that I could live in the same household with her. Because I think we all are getting, that would a, be hard. Yeah. It, as much as I'd like to think I'm not getting emotionally attached to the outcome or the results or the things that are going on, I think it's hard not to. I think everyone in America, here's, what's, here's what I know about this election, and we'll get to it. Here's what I know about this election. Everyone is invested in, what, in the outcome. Everyone, whether yeah. you like Donald Trump or hate Donald Trump, whether you like Joe Biden or just despise the guy, everyone was invested and everyone showed up. 150 million of us went out there and voted, and that's like, what was that, like so 62% awesome. of the yeah. registered voters? I want to know what the other fucking 38% uh, are doing. Where are you? What are you doing? I don't know. You have to go to work or something? <laughs> I mean, <that's laughs> like, take off. Your boss wouldn't let you off work? It's crazy. Where, where did you go? Yeah. Everyone is invested in the emotionally in the outcome of this election, which was called on this last Saturday, by the way, for Joe Biden by the press. Now, by the press. It has not been ratified or verified or whatever. What? What exactly we got to do next? What's it next? Is certified. Certified. The states have to certify, and it just—it's a right. little bit of a process, but that's I was always been once. the case every year, every time there's an election. They every always time. have to certify and count absentee ballots. It's just you know everybody wants that instant thing on Tuesday night, and it just wouldn't happen in this year, and that's okay. There's a pandemic. Not every election has been certified. <laughs> Who is that? John Q. John Q, John Q, that's your last name, John Q? Of course it's not, you big dummy. But I don't want, you, I don't want the liberal elites to find out where I live, so I'm not using my real name. Chrissy, not every election is certified. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. And I don't know if you know that. You sound Bill, like somebody I don't want to argue with. <laughs> that is correct, because I bring the facts. Facts and only facts. I have been certified a grandmaster by the... By the group, 10chan10chan.com.org.cz. <laughs> and I want you to know that I am a certified investigator for Donald A. Trump. How did you get in here? What do you mean, how did I get in here? I called in. <laughs> how did I get in here? I told the police officer at the front door I was here to observe the results of the commercial break recording the first time in the studio. And clearly I could see you two fuck-ups can't figure shit out. <laughs> this is true. Now, how am I supposed to trust the media <laughs> if you can't even press record on your DSLR? <laughs> I guess you got a point there. Exactly. Now, extrapolate that information, take it all the way to Phoenix, Arizona, and you clearly see what's going on. Yep. I have a question for you. Is Jeff a dog person? <laughs> no. Are you sure? Yes. You don't see a tail at night? No. What about a lizard person? No. He doesn't have a lizard head? No. Okay. How would you know it? Are you a certified investigator? <laughs> I am. On 10 chan 10 chan no, com dot com dot cc? No, not okay. On that. <laughs> well, I may give you an invitation just so you can see real truth and real facts in action. Sweet. Just letting you know. Now, let's get back to the certification <laughs> of the election. Certification of the election is ratified by the constituents of these elected, democratically elected, United States of America. By the way, if you do not agree with the certification and the ratification of these results, of this election, of these democratically elected in the United States of America, you are, in fact, a liberal elite. And I'm just letting you know that. Do you or do you not drive a car with four wheels? I do. Liberal elite. <laughs> do you or do you not live in a building where they have balconies? I do. Oh, that must be nice. That must be nice. I live in my mom's basement. And the only grandeur that I have allowed myself, because I do not believe in liberal elitism and wastefulness, the only grandeur that I have allowed myself is my Wii, my Nintendo Wii. Just letting you know that. I thought you said your weed. No. no. Hey, excuse me. <laughs> do I look like a weed smoker to you? Do I look like a Gen Xer 
running around, smoking weed, ignoring my civic responsibilities to carry a gun to the library. Do I look like that? You sound like you need some. Well, listen, carry my gun to the library to protect people. That's the only reason why. Okay? Sounds good. And I identify <laughs> lizard people. <laughs> the lizard people walk amongst us. Okay, we have to get back to the show. I will be here observing. <laughs> I've won a court battle. I'm taking it all the way to the Supreme Court. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll uh, we'll get our Stand attorneys. By. Yeah, we'll get our attorneys right on. <laughs> you don't need a lawyer to be represented in the Americans in these United States. Just letting you know that. Okay, you say these United States, like like there's other United States. No, I'm saying these United States, just to make sure everyone understands it's these ones <laughs> instead of the other ones. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll get back to you. Okay. Keep Georgia red. <laughs> okay. Great. <laughs> Nice. So the, so the results have not been certified. Back to it. The results have not been certified as of Monday. But I mean, you know, everyone's celebrating because I think the press is making a call based on the... You popular know, vote. The popular vote. And the well, electoral votes. Well, the electoral votes, right? The electoral votes are based mm-hmm. on the popular votes on in yeah. each state, and then they usually vote that same way. So yeah. it's, you know, it's Monday, and we have been... Whew. Whoa, we, I've been up. Everyone's emotionally invested in this. And what's what, again, what's clear to me is, is that, you know, as, as much... I voted Republican. I just mm-hmm. say that right now. I voted Democrat. I me consider too. myself a true middle of the road independent. Mm-hmm. Maybe falling in a little bit on the libertarian side. You don't leave me alone. I leave you alone. We do all that good stuff. Uh, but, you know, uh, I feel a certain way about this election. You don't need to listen to too much of the show to figure that part out about it. Everyone's in, emotionally invested in this. Yeah, this but, is just so different. I think there was yeah. just a sigh, a collective sigh of relief that just the the chaos may be coming to an end. There may be like an actual plan of how to move forward. Yeah, I think things. it's like since since and Trump likes to make it, it's like a reality show. It's what he knows. Like yeah. it's it's a bunch of drama followed by more drama followed by more drama. Mm-hmm. And if you're a Republican, I can understand that you're getting your if you're if you're a hardcore Republican, I can understand you're getting your way. Like mm-hmm. things are happening in your direction, so maybe you hold your nose and you deal yes. with it. I don't see things quite that way. Me personally, even though I agree with some of the Republican points of view, I don't see things necessarily that way because I think that the head of the snake is the rest of the body follows. Yeah. And so if you've got a bunch of chaos and drama in the White House, you're only focusing on the Camelot part of this. And every day, everyone's hanging on the every tweet and moving this way when he says move this way, and that way when he says that mm-hmm. way and all the other Very stuff. Very unstable. Yeah. And so I think, you know what, to be honest with you, I want to not talk about politics for a little bit. Yeah. So that's why I'm choosing to back to back somebody that I don't think we're going to have to talk about politics too much. Let's let's talk about it every once in a while when, you know, when a vote comes up or, you know, yeah. putting in new justices or there's someone, you know, we got to look at an appointee or whatever that. We all should be paying attention, but should we be paying attention this much? I mean, no. And I think everyone is just like the reaction you saw on Saturday was just like a big re- collective sigh of relief. Yeah, of weight being lifted. hundred yeah. percent. I mean, yeah. So, so, Chris, so Chrissy's feeling it. I'm tired. <laughs> I was hung over. We were popping champagne and dancing all around. And Kamala, huge. Yeah, for Kamala. Me, for women, you I, know, yeah. to have that 100 years after we gained the right to vote, which it seems weird there we never had the right to vote. But anyways, we gained the right to vote in 1920. And it's now 2020. It's 2020. And Kamala. Kamala. Is, you know. Mixed race. Very historic. Yeah. yeah mixed race. So first I, woman I, I in, to hold a higher office. I was happy. Yeah. It was just, yeah, a big sigh of relief and just a historic moment. I, and I'll even be partying harder, I think, on on the inauguration. Yeah, inauguration. You get a, file. Uh, well, listen. When it's certified, John Q. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way Biden will win this election once all legal votes are counted. By the way, stop the counting in Pennsylvania. Start the counting in Arizona. <laughs> Count my votes, not your votes. <laughs> yes. Okay, just listen. That's part of the problem. You guys have a mixed message. I think you ought to get on a Zoom phone call. We, we have many Zoom phone calls. I have three a night, actually, with all four of my additional members of the investigative squad to make sure that we don't overthrow these democratically elected United States. I'm just letting you know that. Okay. Make sure Jeff's not a dog person. <laughs> Check back. Um, I'm not a woman. That I know of. And but so, you play one on TV but sometimes. But I do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, not a woman. You know a lot of, about women. <clears throat> I do know a lot about women. Yes. Yeah. That's why we've been best friends for so long. Well, listen, <clears throat> I, think I, I think I'm think i interested in the human psyche in general. So, you know, woman, man. And, I, you know. Yeah. I, okay. 
I'm not a woman, but I, and so therefore I, I won the lottery as far as genetics are concerned. So I can't imagine what it's like to feel like you don't have the same rights or privileges as someone else. Like I won the, I won the skin color lottery. I won the middle-class lottery. I won the man lottery. I won it all essentially. And um, that's through no doing of my own, through no fault of your own. You know, you happen to be a woman, mm -hmm. I think. <laughs> Checked. Can I check? No, 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 Henry. no, no, Henry Fonda. You tried that the last time hey, when listen. I went out. No, I didn't. I just wanted to make sure you were folding the clothes correctly in my closet. <laughs> Can I help it? Can I? I just wanted to check and see. I thought maybe you were wearing my jeans and I was wearing yours. I didn't know. I just wanted to make sure everything was okay. I can't believe women can vote in your country. Yes, of course they can, Henry. Though they can't vote in your country? No, of course not. This is... Men and women have two totally different mineral makeups. Men are made of steel and vinegar, and women are made of dirt and brittle bones. And sugar and spice <laughs> and everything nice. Well, it depends on who you are. <laughs> I mean, ask Ariana Grande what she's made of. If you ask me, she's made of vengeance and of attorneys. <laughs> that's, that's what I know. She's... Uh, listen, I may be a little not. Maybe this is not the best conversation for me right now because I'm still a little upset about yeah. my de pending divorce. Wound, the wound is still raw. The wound is still very raw. But what I do know is that women should probably have their own voting section. I think this would. I think this this will make you feel better, right? Correct. <laughs> if you have your own voting section and we have our own voting section, and then our votes count first, and then we decide, and then you think about things later on. Hmm. I don't know. Okay, well, I'll this vote is, on that. This is how it works in my country, and it's been working <laughs> fine for ages. Which country is that? I don't know what to say right now. I'm under a few investigative uh, problems here, and uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. But just let, just, just so you know, we vote first, they vote second, we decide, they talk about it at tea parties. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> but they, you know, they have their own tea parties, and we only have to have four or five security guards for tea parties. Just letting you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we fought hard for that one. Let me tell you, <laughs> well, I wanted ten. I wanted ten. I didn't. Uh, I don't trust what the women are up to in this country. No, sorry, Bob. Has anyone seen my ex-wife, by the way, on Twitter or anything like that? I know you're friends with Seth Rogen now. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you heard? Has he said anything? No, he hasn't. Okay. Well, listen. I've got to go and uh, I got to go and fix this broken website. I think it's best that you do go. Okay. Bye. We podcast universe always here to help. Bye. Okay. Bye. Hey, listen. You got that uh, some extra time to come over later on tonight? Not tonight. Okay. I do have a load of dirty laundry. <laughs> You. Okay, just checking. Okay, talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Henry. Oh, wow. Henry's a sexist. Who knew? Well, I well, had an idea. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't suspect any. Maybe Henry and John Q should get together. Maybe those two would make a cute couple. So Tuesday night, the election. So Tuesday, the election day. <clears throat> yeah. I took my mom to vote. Aw. Yeah, it was That's a really sweet of you. Now she she has told me many times that this would be her first time voting. Like over the last four years, she's been at the the fir at first for the first six months that Trump was in office, she was like all about it, and she was watching Fox News twenty four hours a day. She was getting all riled up. She would come to dinner and she would purposefully start an argument. You know, like <laughs> you know, like <laughs> well, what's wrong with Trump? You know. What's wrong with Trump building a wall at the border? And I'd be like, oh, my God, Mom. I mean, do these children, they can live in cages, can't they? <laughs> okay, well, all right. You know, it's a, eventually I just stop I just stop talking about it altogether. I'd be like, listen, Mom, they yeah. just put it down. But then all of a sudden, about a year in, she she just shows up to dinner one time. And she, you know what? I don't think I like that Donald Trump too much. And I'm like, oh, really? Why don't you like that Donald Trump too much? And I think it was something really stupid, like, I don't know, he he... He put somebody in charge of the Department of Homeland Security that she didn't like. And I was like, I had that no idea. That was the straw. That was the straw. I was like, I had no idea that you paid attention to <laughs> shit like that. Well, I'm more smart than you think. So I pick my mom. So then mom gets all riled up about voting. And she registers to vote electronically. And everything okay over there? Yeah, my microphone just feels it's high. A feel, it, feel, it feels <laughs> high or it feels low? It feels high. Okay, let me... There you go. How's that? <laughs> and then we'll go like that. Excuse all the noises. Yes. This, a, this is live television. Back. Lo-fi. <laughs> <laughs> this is podcasting in the same room. This is what happens. Yes. 
I like it. So my mom gets all riled up after the, over the next three years. And what we decide, what I, someone registers her to vote, Texas Jean, you know, the one from Texas. Yes. That's why they call her Texas Jean. That just is letting why. You know, yeah. <laughs> there's Cleveland Bob and Texas Jean. And then there's the Texas from Arizona. There's, there's Arizona, Texas. There's Arizona Jean, Texas Jean. And then there's Georgia Jean, just in case anybody's okay. wondering. A lot of jeans over I there. I was wondering. <laughs> Me too. How many jeans do you have at your table? <laughs> um, and so she gets all riled up. Texas Jean gets her to, to register to vote. And then on the day of the election, she asked me if I would come pick her up and take her there. My mom uses a walker, so she needs a little bit of help. And I said, you know what, mom? Of course I will. I think that's a really good good thing that a son can do for his mom. Take yes, her to vote. absolutely. For supposedly the first time. Now, I don't really know that that's 100% the truth. I think she might have just forgotten that she voted for like Kennedy. Could have been a while. Over, right? Yep. So we get to the voting place. There's no one there. It's an elementary school. No one there. There are 35 poll workers. There are two people voting. My mom's one of them, right? And as soon as we pull up to the sidewalk, there's a lady who greets us. My mom rolls down the window. This is the first thing that my mom fucking says. First thing that my mom says. Is this where you vote? Yes. Yes, ma'am, it is. Great, because I want to get that Donald Trump out of office. <laughs> I hate him. <laughs> and I'm like, mom, you know, the lady's just like trying to be nice. She's like, yeah. okay, okay. You know, you can park right here and then you guys can walk up. There's no one here. So just park right in front of the door. If she rolls up the window, mom, you cannot campaign inside of a polling place. Like you just can't do it. It's first of all, it's illegal. Second of all, it's really frowned upon. You know, you don't go around shouting who you're going to vote for. That's why they have the big barriers up in between right. the two things. It's so yeah. that you don't see what a, what other people are doing and people don't see what you're doing. It feels like a very private, personal thing, yeah. which maybe we should go back to, by the way. Maybe we all shut up and just vote privately, I say, after this election. But anyway, yeah. so, so my mom says, I don't understand. If we're here to vote, then why can't I talk about who I'm voting for? And I'm like, mom, it's just a thing. You just don't do it, okay? Can we just like, keep, it, keep it to adult roar? Did she just all of a sudden turn Italian right there? <laughs> just keep it to a dull roar. Keep roll. it to a dull roar. Okay, ma? You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, we're going to get some pasta and some matzo ball soup a little, little, little later on. I don't understand what you're doing. You hear? You embarrass me? I'm your son. I'm trying to take you here to vote. All of a sudden, we're here. You're, you're yelling. You're screaming. Take it down like four notches. Okay, ma? Why? We're going to go over the Brooklyn Bridge for you to go vote. All I want you to do is get out of the car, walk to the front down in Boston. Now we're in Boston. All I wanted you to do is go to the, get to the car, go in there, ask for a glass of water. <laughs> I don't understand what you're talking about, honey. I thought you were worried about it, Mom. <laughs> I'll make you a pizza pie when we get home. So mom gets out of the car. She, I grab her walker. She's going. There's like, there's a couple people out there having a smoke break or whatever. And my mom. This is the first time I've ever voted. They're all like. <laughs> Yay. Yay. And we're going to vote Joe Biden because Trump's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> like, mom, shut up. You can't say that stuff. <laughs> My mom is like a small child. I have a small child. He's too. Uh, <laughs> Terrible. Never truer words have been spoken than these two words in the English language. Terrible twos. Okay, let me say Because <laughs> sometimes I'm like, you know, Matthias is like, I'm all the way across the room and he's putting his tongue in the electrical socket and yeah. I'm like, no, as loud as I can. And he's like, eh. <laughs> he goes closer. He's like, eh. <laughs> no attracts children. Like oh, yeah. flame attracts moths. I just oh, want yeah. you to and know then they that. look at you too. Like, yes. let me see if he's looking while yes. I'm doing the thing I'm not supposed to do. <laughs> and they are, and you're watching. I feel like my mom, <laughs> I, I was talking to my two-year-old son there for a minute. Because I said, mom, you cannot do this inside of this place. And she just got louder and louder <laughs> and more boisterous. We walk up to the table. First thing she says is, this is my son, Brian, and he's going to help me vote for Joe Biden. We got to get <laughs> Trump out of office. Do you know how mean he is? And the old man's like, I, I don't know what you're talking about, man. But, you know. Yeah. And then, we, neutral. and then we go to the touch screen. I'm not going to touch the touch screen. I'm going to let my mom touch the touch screen so it's all legitimate. So we're not stealing the election. This is exactly what happened. <laughs> this is exactly why. You watch. You watch. Did you also know that Donald J. Trump and all of the printers in the United States of these of these ballots have put a special microchip in every ballot and when they're recounted we're going to find out where the real fraud is democrats <laughs> and lizard people 
And Alex Jones. Okay. <laughs> God. So we get to the touch screen. Not going to touch it, but I'm walking my mom through it. Hey, mom, press next. This, this, this says you're, you're here to vote. This says you're legal to vote in this country. You follow all the rules. Next. Okay, I'm hitting next. Okay, now, the next screen is going to come up. There's going to be two choices, three choices. You can write in one, Donald J. Trump, Mike Pence, Biden, Kamala, okay? Well, I'm voting for Biden because Trump has done nothing <laughs> but ruin this country. And I'm like, holy shit, mom, shut up. No, <laughs> no, I won't. She's ne- she hasn't talked to anybody about po- anybody. She hasn't talked to politics with anybody except for me and the people at the polling place. Yeah. And she has to talk to yeah. the people at the polling place. Totally. It was like the most, <laughs> it was quite funny actually now that I think about it, but it was quite embarrassing while it was happening. Yeah. I just wanted my mom to just vote and get out of there and get her That's sticker great. and feel good about it. Yeah. But she but she felt good. She felt really good about it. She got excited that she was part of the process. I was excited for her. And I love my I'm mom. Excited I love her. my mom and I'm so happy that I could do, do that for her. Now here's the Very interesting nice. question. Someone Very asked. Nice. That, <laughs> Very nice. Very <Jin-quish. laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Would you like my daughter? <laughs> there I go, back into the Boston accent. Uh-huh. I can't keep it all together on the third <laughs> taping, just letting, letting you know. So uh, here's the question that was posed to me, and it's an interesting question, and look, we'll talk it out right now. If my mother was voting for Donald Trump, would I have taken her to the polling place? Yeah, of course, right? I, th- I think probably not, yeah. <laughs> your your vote just would have just canceled her. Yeah, my vote so. would have canceled her vote out, so I guess, you Why know, not? it's all even. Would I have? I don't know. I have to think about that one for a second. I th- of course I would at the end of the day. Of course I would. I would take her to vote, and, you know, she's she can do her civic duty like I can do my civic duty. But would it make it harder for me to do that? Yeah, probably. Well, that brings up a good point because my grandfather, about a month or so before the election, he just had knee surgery and... So before that, he was trying to get his absentee ballot situated, and he's 88, so, and he's so good with a lot of the things he does on the computer and the phones, but some things, you know, he needs some help with. Yeah. He was asking me to try and help him with the absentee ballot, and I was like, mm, I, can't do it. I don't know what that, I don't know what that means. You're going to have to get dad know. to help you. <laughs> you pawned it off on your father. I did. You pawned it off on your father. Yeah. I, I just couldn't be a part of actually moving. Oh, yeah. Being so I see where you're going with the driving. I, you see where I'm going? Now, yep. I would have driven, but I probably would have sent her off on her own. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I'm going to get a pizza. <laughs> this is exactly why this election is being stolen. <laughs> 75, I just want to let you know, 75 million children under the age of 18, over the age of 15, have driven illegal Italian immigrants to the polls, paid them to vote. Oh I don't even think they had driver's licenses. Do you have a driver's license? It's been taken away from me because of a gun-related issue. I had the right to carry that gun into the McDonald's. Just letting you know that. Thanks, John Q. No problem. Still observing. <laughs> so far, I haven't seen any infractions. I do think I saw a tail somewhere. I can't tell who it wasn't coming from. <laughs> It's true that there is a conspiracy theory going around about lizard and dog people. What? I just want you to know this. Oh, God. Not, I'm not 100% fabricating this particular thing. <sighs> I don't even want to get into it because we're not a conspiracy theory related show. <laughs> we, I don't know if you remember this, but, and now we're totally off track, but I don't even remember this, but on the first and second show, we actually did some like little, like we had a little... Uh, lizard band? No, no, we didn't do about li- lizard people. But we had a little like conspiracy theory section of the show where we would talk <laughs> oh, about what conspiracy yeah. theory. Yeah, well, you had the the, um, the, the pastors. The pastors. <laughs> uh, we had the pastors. We had yeah. the crackhead Casanova. Yeah. And then, but the first two episodes, if you go back and listen to them, we actually did like a little conspiracy theory yeah. bit or like a section of the show where we would talk about the going <laughs> conspiracy theories. I quickly decided that for me and the safety of my family, I, <laughs> that yeah. I would take Best that to out stay of stay away. Yeah, it's just best to stay off those those topics. I, I mean, you know, unless someday I start believing Unless them. you are a lizard person. Unless I am a lizard person. <laughs> exactly why I'm here to observe. I knew it. I knew it, Brian. You're that's a lizard person. That's what a person. lizard person yes. would say. You and George Soros. <laughs> that's a li- Classic lizard people. Classic. <laughs> you, Jeffrey Tubin, and George Soros. 
conspiring to take over the presidency by manhandling our votes. Count the votes and stop counting the votes. Dep- <laughs> I, I can't remember which state I'm in. But one of those two, either stop counting or keep counting. It's currently a lawsuit. Um, so, yeah, so that so it took my mom to vote, and now here we are. Super, super excited, to be yeah. honest with you, that the week is over. Yes. And again, let me repeat, I'll be super excited just to not talk about fucking politics for four years. Yes. Or not be that interested but in politics But you know what's going to happen, Brian, is that we're like the center of the political universe that's coming up because we've got two... Senator seats. We live in the state of Georgia. Up for those for yeah. grabs. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> we live in the state of Georgia uh, in the southern southeastern part of the United States. For those of you who are international listeners, uh, Georgia, in and around Atlanta, Georgia is kind of where we're located. Uh, and the Senate, which is one of the two branches of uh, Congress, is going to be decided by two separate runoffs that are going to happen here in yes. the state of Georgia. So there will be, never will a more expensive race be had. It's really going to be, be crazy. Hundred, I know. Yeah. I was just telling my wife yesterday, I'm like, no. you're not going to see a Kroger commercial. You're not going to no, see a grocery store commercial for two months. All political. Yeah. There's going to be no Christmas ads. There's going to be none of that <laughs> yeah. shit because the... People spending money on advertisement are going to pay top dollar to be on 24 hours a day. And with one state, they can do that, right? And th- and there are going to be big donors mm-hmm. that are going to come in on both sides. There's going to be, you know, I don't know, yeah. whoever it is, whoever, what conspiracy theory it is, Soros <laughs> yeah. or Bill Gates and, you know, who's yeah. the other ones? The Koch brothers. They're all going to be spending a ton of billion dollars down here to make sure they keep control of Senate. So we have to go through this all again. We have another two months Mm-hmm. of this shit, at least here in Georgia, we have another two yeah. months. And of course, all the recounts and stuff, but hopefully those will be over uh, in a couple of days. Hey, I wanted to take a minute and talk to you and say thank you to, I didn't know, I had no idea myself until very recently that there was a magazine about podcasting. Yes. And at first I thought I, it to be quite funny. Always learning, always learning. Always learning about podcasting. Uh, and as we get deeper into this, you know, our tentacles go here and they go there. And I... Lizard person, classic lizard person. <laughs> That's exactly what a lizard person would say. Classic tentacles. You're not even trying to hide it at this point. You're just letting people know you're an octopus. You're an octop. You're an octoperson. <laughs> you're an octoperson, just like George Soros. Yes. Yes. And if you don't think I'm going to be here to observe the Senate races runoffs that are going to go on, that you got another thing coming. Do you have a place I can stay? I'm a little bit low on funds <laughs> right now. I haven't worked since 2015. How come? I got fired from my job at Quick Trip. <laughs> Why? Brandishing a weapon and <laughs> brandishing a weapon and a few other indiscretions, which, by the way, I am well within my rights to do. However, Quick Trip did not see it the same way. Uh, we have a lawsuit. Can't talk about it. <laughs> okay. okay. Thanks. Thanks, John Q. Uh, there's a podcast magazine out there. Yes. And that podcast magazine is called Podcast Magazine. Yes. Serendipitously, and I won't get into all the, it, it, the bits and bops because <laughs> that might be a little confusing, but serendipitously, we got asked to do a feature for Podcast Magazine. In other words, can they do an interview with us and then write it up for the magazine in the comedy section of that magazine? And we so thought, exciting. so exciting. So we had Rob... Rob, who was super cool. Super cool. Very interesting guy, too. I mean, cool cat, best-selling, man. best-selling author. and Best-selling author. Yeah, he'd run. Well, about. he does the Hot 50. The Hot 50. The, yeah, the podcast Hot 50. So it's kind of like a Casey Kasem from back I in the day. I listen to it mm-hmm. very yeah. much. Very much like Casey Kasem. Very much like a countdown show you would hear on the yeah. old radios. But what they do is they, they count down the top 50 podcasts for that particular month. And uh, and it's all reader submitted, I think. Listener submitted. Listeners, so yeah. you go and you vote for your favorite podcast. Or I, I, I mean, I don't know the voting process because I haven't actually been to the voting page yet. But I'll go there and I'll, I'll reiterate this next week. Mm-hmm. But if you're so inclined, if you'd like to do, you can go to Podcast Magazine, Google it, and go to the top 50 uh, podcast um website and vote for the commercial break we would love that i think that would be great if we can get on the top 50 that'd be nice yeah and then in december on the december issue you will of course see us look look we just did a photo shoot we did just do a photo shoot which was grand it was grand and by photo shoot i mean selfies out in the backyard (laughs) (laughs) no dollars spared here at the commercial break (laughs) 
I just want everyone to know that we were out in my backyard. I think we get some good ones. I do think we your got wife some good is ones. so cute and so great. I mean, she she puts up with us, doesn't she? Well, the good news is you're photogenic <laughs> <laughs> and nice. My wife is just about fed up with me. She's like, "Why are yeah, you? I, why do you have that look on your face?" I've noticed the tone of the pod. The tone of Astrid changed regarding the podcast when you walked in the door. She's like, finally, finally. <laughs> Because I'm always like, I'm going to go in the bedroom. I'm going to go. I'll be doing some podcast stuff. And Esther's like, oh, my God, I have we have children. Yes. <laughs> but when you walked in the door, she's like, finally, this, now I have some company. <laughs> okay, now you can go do your podcast, Brian. <laughs> and she put the studio together and it looks beautiful. Oh, it looks yeah. so good. You absolutely have to go uh, look at the studio, tcbpodcast.com. You can join the break room. Now, while we're on the minutia of the show, let me talk about something. We didn't do the after show last week. We're probably not going to do it this week because we had some technical complications <laughs> yes. that lasted about an hour. Um, I suggested putting up a montage of our <laughs> that <laughs> That we might do. I might do that. I'm going to put in, a, I'll put in some good music and like we'll put some, a montage. Yeah, some good music. <laughs> of the photo shoot. There's some great photos in there. <laughs> um, but we'll get back to it next week. As the uh, the break room is ever changing, it's going to be ever changing again. And I do believe, I do believe that at some point, Chrissy and I, sometime soon, Chrissy and I are going to actually be doing two shows a week available to the one available to the re- uh, members of the break room and one available on the normal podcast channels. Yeah, probably in the new year. Yeah. First, first of the year. Yep. So, yeah. I, I was thinking Christmas night. I was thinking Christmas <laughs> Eve. <laughs> I was thinking Christmas Eve, we just <laughs> take a shot at it. Live Christmas. I was thinking we Egg on Christmas on. Eve. <laughs> we have a little tree in the background. Jingle bells, jingle <laughs> bells, jingle bell rock. <laughs> I sing a song to my children. It's doodle bug, doodle bug, Aww. doodle bug. Isn't that cute? I'm really enjoying being in live in person with you. I right? like this. I actually think I like this a little bit better yeah. than the looking at the screen thing. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and I like when we look at the screen together. <laughs> because then I can look at you still in the screen. I just look at you over there. Ha! <laughs> yes. Wow. Did you know that uh, Oregon has now decriminalized all drugs? I heard this. Is this yes. not fucking crazy news? I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's about time. I mean, I think we need to stop. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye bye. I was thinking to my, yeah, bye-bye. I, I was thinking to myself that now Oregon is going to become the bachelorette and yes. <laughs> the bachelorette and bachelor party <laughs> capital of the world. I agree. For sure. Forget Vegas. And for people who are about to declare bankruptcy, one of the two. Right. <laughs> because if you can do cocaine, heroin, LSD, ecstasy, if you can do all of this stuff without fear of repercussion or major repercussion, I mean, I think we're talking about small amounts, you know, well, like. Well, what I did here was that they're going to focus on treatment which is good instead of incarceration. So in other words, you could still be getting the legal system. You it would just would be still be in trouble. Worth it. But I think totally yeah. worth it. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I have know. a couple children and I still think it's worth it. I think go get a couple of eight balls. <laughs> it's a couple of the local bars, a <laughs> couple of the strip clubs, you know, live like I'm 26 again. Yeah. Do it like they do on the discovery channel. <laughs> I think about, I was thinking about this over the weekend, not because I have experience with it, but because I have experience with it. That how weird it might be. And you're my friend that has experience with it. Yes. Chrissy has <laughs> never been involved in any of these shenanigans. But I used to work in the restaurant industry. I was a bartender for a long time. I managed bars for a long time. I managed restaurants for a long time. How weird it would be if there were no repercussions to the shenanigans that were going on in and around the restaurant business. Now, in case you don't know, the restaurant business is notorious for drug use because you're on a totally whacked schedule everyone's working real hard on the cement floor for a long time. Mm-hmm. And usually it's a younger crowd. Yeah. So they let, they, they work hard, they party hard. Yeah. If you know somebody in the restaurant business or who has ever been in the restaurant business, they understand what it's like to have to work for a fucking living. I'm telling you that right now. Mm-hmm. Restaurant, and it teaches you social skills. Yeah. I think the restaurant business is a great business to learn about life. And I will never let my children be a part of it. Right. <laughs> never let exactly. my children be a part Steer, of it. Stay away. Yeah, because I know all about it. <laughs> Drug use comes with that. There's drug use in every segment of society, but it's a little bit more open and it's not so frowned upon. I don't upon. know about your, you know, lunchtime cafe bistros, but definitely like yeah, the, I mean, the nighttime dinner, higher, you know, mid to higher end. 
I don't know. I think Cafe Bistro. <laughs> actually, I think from your like Starbucks the lunch places. Yeah, from your Starbucks to Shea Louise at the top of the <laughs> Eiffel Tower. I think it's all the same. To be honest with you, a waiter is a waiter. You know, a waitress is a waitress. A bartender is a bartender. It doesn't matter where they're doing it at. I, I, I personally think because I've worked in a variety of different restaurants yeah. and seen a lot of shenan, and all of them had the same basic, you know, mojo going on. It was like yeah. you know, we're gonna show up for our shift. We're gonna make a little Smile. bit of cash. Make some, make, cash. make some cash, put half of it in our pocket and half of it into the drug dealer's pocket. <laughs> yes. And then we just go on from there. Yeah. And then we'll, you know, party until our next shift three days from now. That's the other <laughs> thing too, is that you get yeah. these breaks in between that are like weird. You have Tuesday and Wednesday morning off instead right. of, you know, Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> but I was thinking laying in bed the other night, like how weird it would be to, to have gone through that same experience, my 10 years in the restaurant business with no fear of ramifications around drug use or abuse. Now, I'm not saying I was sitting around, you know, spiking an eight ball of cocaine every day, (laughs) but I certainly was involved in some of the partying that went on because I was part of the restaurant business. And there was always kind of this cocaine was made a little bit less fun and and all the other drugs made a little bit less fun, I think, by the paranoia that you were going to get caught for some reason doing it. What if there's no paranoia around it? I'm sure that's for a better experience. It makes for a better. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) I'm sure drug abuse is going to tick up a little bit. In Oregon, it's got to, right? It's got to. And then New Jersey just decriminalized or made made legal all hallucinogens. Mm-hmm. And weed. Where was I? Where, where, where was I when this happened? And why can't I be 19 again? I'd never make it out alive, Hoadley. If I lived in New Jersey, I'd we'd never be, make it out alive. If we were 19, we'd be living with our parents for the next 10 years. Did you have you seen all of the... Kids that are living with their parents and during, especially during a pandemic. And I think I read somewhere that the average age that people move out of their parents' house now is like 32. 30s. 32. I moved out of my parents' house when I was like 17 years old. Me too. 18. I was out of there. Mostly, mostly (laughs) not by my choice, but. (laughs) I was by my choice. I was like, I'm ready. Were you ready? Were you getting, were you ready to get out of there? I moved to an apartment with three other girls and we had a blast. Yeah, I don't know if I've I don't know if I've ever told this story. Maybe someday I will. I'm not going to get into all of it right now. But when I moved out of my house, I was 17 years old. My dad had gone out of town. Didn't he drop you off at the McDonald's? This is a different time. Okay. I got I got that was when I moved back in after I failed miserably at moving out. After I couldn't sustain life outside of his his bubble, I moved back in for a period of one month before he took me to the Wendy's. <laughs> the Wendy's bought me a cheeseburger. No one you know pickle, <laughs> small French fry. With a small ass, small French fry, told me I could no longer stay at the place. And then the way that I thought about it, for, the way that I remembered it for years was he then didn't, then he left the restaurant and didn't ever, you know, offer me a ride anywhere. <laughs> but he says that's not at all true. And now I, I, I tend to believe him because I actually think I remember this is, is that I, well, fine. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm taking my book bag with nothing in it and I'm <laughs> going outside to smoke a cigarette. And he said that I ended up on the payphone smoking a cigarette and uh, I had a bright orange <laughs> leather jacket. <laughs> it was the 90s. I thought I was Eddie Vedder or something. I had a bright orange leather jacket smoking a cigarette at the Wendy's payphone. That's how long ago this was. Mm-hmm. And he drove by, honked the horn and said, can I give you a ride somewhere? <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> I don't need anything from you. Fuck you. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> and then, as soon as he left, I was like, <laughs> Fuck. I was just waiting for him to come back. I wasn't actually on a phone call. I was just, it was yeah. one of those phone calls I was pretending to be on. Yeah. And I was like waiting for him to turn the corner again. He's going to come back and get me. <laughs> right, no right. I'll be back home by nine. <laughs> I'll be back home by nine. At the like, strip club by 1030. <laughs> yeah. When I moved out, I moved out with a friend of mine for the first time. I moved out with a friend of mine. My dad was out of town. My mom was not at the house. She was in the hospital at the time. And because neither of us had, neither this this guy or I that I moved in with had credit because we were only 17 years old. We had no credit. But we had fallen into a group of <laughs> girls that were strippers. <laughs> and two of them lived in a townhouse. I mean, in a really shady part of town. They lived in a townhouse, but we thought it was the best thing ever. Yeah. And we ended up subletting the apartment from those strippers. About oh, three days in, we realized that the, and, and the strippers were still like kind of kind of living there, kind of not living there. Uh-huh. What we realized three days in was that the strippers never lived there in the first place. Oh. They were just turning tricks there. Oh. And they continued to turn tricks there while we were living there. <laughs> Guys would be like coming in the back window. Uh. 
like at three o'clock in the morning and we'd be like, wow, what's going on? <laughs> wow. The power got turned off on day number five. We didn't, we never turned it back on. We were just like, oh, we've got candles and hot dogs. Hot dogs are good, right? There's a bathroom at the Wendy's. <laughs> There's a bathroom at the Wendy's. I can get that. <laughs> hey, dad. Is Hey, dad. <laughs> Hey, Dad, is, there, is my room still available? Yeah, you think I can maybe yeah. come back home? Yes, you can. Under the following rules, you are to be in by midnight. There are no strippers allowed at my house around my small children. And you cannot do or bring any drugs into the house. <laughs> Done. Consider that an agreement we can both live by. Day number one. Brian, why is there a stripper? <laughs> Eating Cheerios in my kitchen. I have no idea, Dad. I'm upstairs. I'm way too high to understand what that question is. What time is it? 4.30 in the morning. Sorry, Dad. (laughs) Then I got kicked out. More on that later. More on that later. I mean, listen, he let me stay at the house for a month while I was being an asshole. Nice. I was a derelict child. Nice. (laughs) Nice, Jinkui. This is Brian and Only saying Jinkui. Yes. <laughs> well, listen, we failed miserably the first two tri- two times we tried to record the podcast, but look at us now. I think yes. the third time we got it. Check fresh us as out a on all the socials. Call At, us, email us. Call us, email interact. us, text us. We want your interaction. We want your interaction. Call us, text us, email yes. us. Yeah. We want to count your vote, but only if it's good. That's right. Only if it's good. <laughs> only if it's only if it goes in my direction. That's right. Info at tcbpodcast.com. Info at tcbpodcast.com. Email us. Uh, ask us anything. Ask us anything. We're going to start addressing those questions at the end of yes. each show. Uh, Good news, the- too. Wait, quick, quick. Good yeah, go. news. Good news. Hoadly happy. Yep. Uh, sounds like there's a vaccine on the way. Unbelievable. Pfizer came out today. And I 90% wanna- of cases. Out of 44,000 people, too. So they're going to be following these people over the next two years. It looks very promising. Love it. Things are going to change tomorrow, but it looks like there's light. Yeah, some of these doctors think that by Thanksgiving of next year, the masks will be off. We'll all be back together. So we still got time. We've got to hang in there for a little bit. But there's light at the end of the tunnel. Yes. And uh, 90% uh, efficacy. That's crazy. That's what, like, the measles vaccine. Some doctors were saying that if it was 55%, they were going to be super happy. Yeah. So it's ninety percent. Good news. So at the at or info at tcbpodcast.com. Please email us. Ask us anything at the commercial break on Instagram. Please follow us. TCB Brian on Twitter. www.tcbpodcast.com is the website. You can catch us on YouTube. We'd love it if you would watch us on YouTube. We're in the new studio. We're together. Yes. I hope that this is going to happen more often. May not happen every time, but I hope it's going to happen more often. What else can I say? Love you. I think that's all I got to say. Bye. Bye.